Neutral host operators look set to play a prominent role in 5G and can help build out next generation radio access networks in important but somewhat tricky places. Well, to find out more, I'm talking today with Brendan O'Reilly, Group Chief Technology Officer at BAI Communications. Brendan, uh, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as a neutral host company, what are the critical ongoing developments for BAI right now in terms of 5G radio access network capabilities? Hi, Ray. Thanks for having me again. Uh, from a neutral host point of view, we're really excited that with 5G accelerating across a number of markets, we're seeing operators really keen to get that 5G experience out, not just to consumers, but also to enterprise. So from a consumer point of view, we play very uh, well in our transit markets in New York, uh, Toronto, and uh, Hong Kong. And we're seeing you know, the need for 5G on, on those beginning to come through. But from an enterprise point of view, we're really seeing private networks and 5G private networks start to accelerate. And I think they'll really help businesses drive better efficiency, uh, but also increase their capability to be able to deliver for their customers. Uh, Brendan, you used to work for a mobile operator in the UK, O2. Uh, how different is it in terms of planning and managing a radio access network as a neutral host compared with an MNO? Yeah, it's very different because we are trying to um, build infrastructure that allows all of the operators to join in each of our markets. So it, instead of worrying just about your customers from an MNO point of view, you're really trying to build a, a a network that allows all of the operators to get what they need out of it. And for some, that's obviously allowing them the capacity to be able to drive greater speeds. For others, it's ensuring high availability and, and reliability. The great thing from a neutral host point of view is you're building a, a network to meet multiple needs. And, and therefore, you are able to deliver you know, the requirements of your customers, as well as enhance that across the piece for all the operators. I think the, the other thing is you're also listening to your end customer, that might well be you know, a city, um, it might well be a council, it could be a, a, a transit transport operator, and also helping deliver to their needs, whether that be private uh, networks, helping them drive greater efficiency for their customers, etc. cetera. So um, it, it's very different, it's good, it's good grounding, uh, my, my experience, thankfully, um, but the challenge is very different, and one that I think as we look to the future and the cost of networks increases and you know operators are, are looking at their margins and, and how they invest their capital in the right places, I think as a neutral host operator, it's a great place to be. Now, BAI has just landed a headline grabbing deal in London. Uh, can you tell us about that? Uh, and is there an equivalent elsewhere? Yes, so we announced um, earlier this week that we have won the uh, Transport for London uh, network tender, which has been running for a number of years now. Obviously, I've only joined in the last couple of months, but the team in London have been working on that for well over four years. Um, and after many years of hard work and dedication, it's great to see that hard work pay off for the team in London. It's it's really four different um, elements to the network. It's not only cellular DAS system for the mobile network operators, it's a system for the emergency services network, uh, it's also a fibre network across London um, using TFL's assets. And lastly, it's the opportunity to make the streetscape assets available for small cells. So it's a very multifaceted agreement and one that I think will truly transform my home city. And I'm very excited to be a part of it. You asked whether there's anything equivalent. We, we've had experience of building DAS networks in, in Hong Kong, uh, Toronto and New York, as I mentioned earlier on. And that's really set us in good stead for this. You know, there are elements that are similar across some of those networks, but this is probably the biggest and will be the most advanced network of its kind in the world. So one that we're, we're super excited about here at BAI. Uh, this sounds like a massive undertaking, building 5G coverage through more than 250 miles of tunnels. Uh, I mean, where do you start? What is the first step? Well, actually, the, the first step has, has started um, even before we signed this agreement. Um, uh, TfL themselves had started building some of the infrastructure that, that would be required, and, and they're handing that over to, to us to, to carry on. So, you know, uh, once we announced the agreement, actually that night, um, the contractors in the underground were working, you know, under the, the BAI badge. 
uh, and we're already beginning to install um, equipment and fibers, etc., cetera, um, for our rollout. The, the, the truth is we're, we're focused on delivering a great network across those four elements that I talked, to, talked about, but the underground itself will be our initial focus, ensuring that we have that ESN network, that, that public safety network, but also that we have a, a DAS system that the mobile operators will be able to join. Then we will look further out and, and start to look at how do we how do we deliver the capacity and the coverage that's required in a 5G world for London above ground so that some of those great things we've been so excited about for years, whether that be autonomous vehicles, whether that be uh, you know the ability to deliver a great experience across 5G, bringing together those mass IoT sensors, you know, we absolutely believe that this agreement will help deliver that in, in short order in the next couple of years. So um, we've already started, We're, we've got a lot to do, um, you know, and working in conjunction with TfL and our partners, we really hope to be able to deliver a fantastic experience for Londoners um, in, the coming, in the coming months and years. Uh, and this sounds like it will be heavily reliant on 5G small cells. Uh, will you need specific small cell technology for this deployment, or does the tech already exist? I think a lot of it already exists. And the great thing about the industry work we work in, Ray, is that it's constantly evolving. So, you know, we have the ability to deliver 4G and 5G small cells today. Um, and the operators uh, around, uh, not just in the UK, but around the world are already doing that. We've seen deployments in, in, in the US, uh, we're beginning to see them in Canada and, 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 and other markets. So the technology is there, but it will constantly evolve. And, and what we want to build is an ecosystem whereby the operators have the flexibility to, to choose the, uh, the vendors that they want to work with, you know, with Open RAN on the horizon. You know, we've seen lots of announcements in the, in the last couple of months around Open RAN. We absolutely want to make sure that 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 technology and that, and that ecosystem can be used on the infrastructure that we're building. So um, absolutely we can go today, but we're constantly evolving our thinking to ensure that our customers, the operators, can deliver to their customers the experience that they want to. Well, this is a really exciting development in London. going to really look forward to see how this builds out and how this develops over the next few years. And of course, I look forward to using it and being a, a beneficial customer of it as well. Brendan, thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks very much, Ray. And, you know, I just, just to add, uh, obviously the operators built uh, part of a, a network on the Jubilee line uh, last year. That's live. Uh, we will be taking that on as well. So uh, for anybody who wants to see what the future holds, uh, part of the Jubilee line is already up and running. And, and, and that will give a real insight as to what, what the future for London will hold. Excellent. Great example. Thanks very much, Brendan. Thank you.